Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to American Powertrain. Now today I want to talk to you about a critical aspect of your manual transmission install that is far too often skipped. And that is the index of your bell housing to the engine crankshaft center line. You wouldn't build an engine and not check your bearing clearances. Your transmission bell housing is the same. Just because these parts are made to work together doesn't mean that they fit together perfectly every single time. The index of your center line for your transmission must be within five thousandths, that's .005 thousandths of an inch, to the center line of the crankshaft. If it's more than that, it will put excessive pressure on the side of the input shaft to your transmission, which will cause hot spots, you'll burn up your bearings, your transmission won't shift as smooth, and it voids the warranty. So we're gonna show you how to dial indicate your bell housing to your engine using a dial indicator with a magnetic base, and then we're gonna show you how to fix the offset using offset dowel pins so that you can do it for your project. Okay, so we've got our engine on a stand on our bench. You can do this in the car. You can do this on the floor. Uh, it's hard to do on an engine stand because the engine stand mounts to the back side, so it makes it really difficult to do it. So we've got ours up here on this Summit Racing uh, engine stand that we picked up. Okay, so first things first, this is a 2015 Chevrolet L83 5.3 Gen 5 LT series engine. That's what we're working with. We have our flywheel installed. The number one most important thing that you need to remember when you're setting up your engine to index, the bell housing has to be installed as if it is going in the car and it's the final installation. You'll notice we have a shim plate here that comes with our quick time bell housing that has to be installed. If you do this without it, all your measurements are gonna be wrong and it'll be completely useless. So you have to make sure that every component is installed as if this is going into the car and going to be used immediately. We have our flywheel installed. It is torqued down uh, to spec and ready to go. This is our bell housing. We're gonna throw it on here. So we're just gonna install the bell housing. Once you're to this point, you just need to tighten down your bell housing bolts. You want at least four covering four corners. I'm just going to throw those on here. This is our magnetic base for our dial indicator, and we are using an analog dial. You can also use a digital. A digital dial indicator will work really well for zeroing. It's a little bit easier to use in that regard. I like analog because it's very accurate. So this can be a bit tricky to uh, install and get adjusted. So basically what you do is you, let's see here, you have to kind of mess around with the placement to get it right. You your dial indicator base, you want it on the flywheel surface, not the center of the flywheel. Okay. All right, so we got that on, and we're just gonna slip this on. We'll leave it loose. This is our indicator mount. All dial indicators are a little bit different. They'll have different arms, different adjusting uh, mechanisms. So you just kind of have to figure it out for what you need. When you are setting up your dial indicator, you want to make sure that no part of the base, the arm or the indicator touches anything on the inside of the bell housing we do have this clutch fork for a manual clutch uh, we need to remove this but you can hit this if you depending on how your indicator is set up 
You also want your dial indicator to be as perpendicular to this inner surface. This is what we are measuring here, the inside ring where the transmission sits. So what we're gonna do is pull this back just a little bit. These can be a pain in the butt, but you want it nice and tight because you do not want any of this to move around on you while you are indicating. We've got our dial indicator connected to the flywheel. We've got everything set up and we're just zeroed at the 12 o'clock position just as our starting spot. I've got my silver Sharpie here. We're gonna spin this 380 degrees. We're looking for the largest offset, preferably positive offset, uh, but we'll also mark a negative offset. So go ahead and spin this 360 degrees. Okay, stop right there. No, right there. Okay, come back. Go, go, let's go all the way around. All right, so at this position, which is about four o'clock, we are minus 15. I'm gonna call this number one. I'm gonna mark directly across. This is going to be position three. And we'll come up here, that's two, and that's four, so two. Four. All right, so at position one, this is where we're gonna zero it. We're gonna go ahead and zero right here. Then we're gonna do the swing again and we're gonna mark all of our offsets. So we're gonna do 90 degrees at a time. Stop. All right, position two. So we are positive 12 thousandths here. That number gets split in half because we're looking for the radius. So what you actually have here is six thousandths that's still out of spec. Give me another 90 degrees. Stop. All right, there we are positive 20 thousandths, uh, yeah, 20 thousandths. And in the number four position, we are positive 10 thousandths. So in reality, we are our hard measurements are 12, positive 12, positive 20, positive 10, and zero. So that means that our max position is here. So this is our largest offset. So this is what we're working with. So in order to index the bell housing and get this shifted, we need to shift the bell housing this direction across here. And we will do that with these offset bell housing pins that we've already got. Now these are 7,000s offset. I think that might get us into spec. Let's give it a shot. I'm just gonna remove the dial indicator. And we will move uh, the bell housing. Now we're gonna use just a soft hammer and a little brass punch, and we're gonna tap the original dowels out. Sometimes they go flying. All right, so now we're going to install our offset dowel pins. These are our dowel pins. Now these have a cut, so there's two halves. When you tighten this set screw in here, it expands that that's what holds it into the block. On these particular pins, that slot is also the offset. So your offset is running vertically with that cut. So we know that our bell housing needs to shift this way. So we're going to put these in and we're gonna run these at an angle running this way. So I'm just gonna pick this up. Tap them in. Okay, now these also have a couple of flats on one side so that you can adjust them with a 9 16th wrench. So we're just gonna make sure that these are angled the same direction at about the same angle. There we go. Okay, so now, 
Now we put the bell housing back on. We've got our bell housing installed again. Now we're gonna put our dial indicator back in, in the same position. Everything's set up, now we just need to spin it again. I'm gonna go ahead and we take it to position one. Okay, right there. Okay, so now we're at position one. I'm gonna go ahead and zero our dial. All right. Give me 90 degrees. Okay. All right, so position one is zero. Position two is minus four thousandths. Give me 90 degrees. Okay, stop. Position three is minus three thousandths, well within spec. Give me another 90 degrees. Stop. Okay, and number four is positive one thousandths. So now our offset pins are dialed in. Our bell housing is well within spec. Uh, our furthest offset is two thousandths, so we're good to go. The last step is a 3 16 Allen wrench to tighten down our offset dowel pins. Just give these and tighten them down nice and snug. And that's all there is to indexing the bell housing on your transmission install. This is really easy to do but it is also a critical step. You've got to make sure you do it so that you don't void your warranty on your brand new Tremec transmission. Thanks for watching.